So there is this idea that uh, these temples are very much alive. Ah, ancient Egypt, a civilization that was already ancient when Rome was new and Athens was a backwater. It was one of the longest reigning empires in history, and their legacy can still be felt today everywhere you look. But the Egyptians were not only cool-looking people with dozens of goods, they were also pretty much at the cutting edge of anything and everything they did. From jaw-dropping inventions to mind-blowing medical advancements that would make even modern doctors raise an eyebrow, here are 20 unbelievable things they didn't teach you about ancient Egypt. Number 20. Nefertiti Bust the captivating Nefertiti bust, a remarkable masterpiece of ancient Egypt, unveils the timeless beauty and allure of Queen Nefertiti, the esteemed great royal wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Crafted around 1349 BCE by the skilled hands of Thutmose, this exquisite sculpture was discovered in the very workshop where it was believed to have been created in the ancient city of Armana. Egypt. Renowned for its elegance and grace, the Nefertiti bust has garnered immense fame as one of the most replicated works from ancient Egypt. It has transformed Nefertiti into an iconic figure, representing the epitome of feminine beauty in the ancient world. And it's easy to see why. She is breathtaking! However, her beauty also comes with a lot of historical dark moments. In 1912, a trailblazing German archaeological team led by Ludwig Borchardt stumbled upon this enchanting artifact. However, faced with strict regulations against removing valuable archaeological treasures from Egypt, Borchardt decided to camouflage it with a layer of clay to smuggle it out of Egypt. The bust has ignited a fervent debate between Egypt and Germany, with Egypt demanding its repatriation since its first public unveiling in 1924. This dispute has spurned discussions on the role of museums in rectifying the wounds inflicted by colonialism, prompting introspection and criticism critical examination of the past and compelling narratives surrounding European colonialism and its impact on Egypt's rich history and cultural heritage. The Germans clearly stole the bust. Shouldn't it go back to its rightful owners? Now it's time for the star topic. Egypt is not what you think it is. Have you ever wondered why the Egyptian royalty wore those extravagant headpieces? Well, as it turns out, it may not have been for aesthetic purposes, but to hide the truth. A group of scientists decided to give the Nefertiti bust an x-ray, and what they found will make you gasp in horror. They allegedly found an alien skull inside the bust. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at this image. The scientists have remained anonymous because, you know, they are terrified. But they managed to leak this image and uploaded it on the internet. Does this mean that the pharaohs were not human? Is this the reason why the Egyptians were so advanced way before every other culture on Earth? And most importantly, if the pharaohs were an extraterrestrial race, are they still among us? Too many questions, not enough answers. Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that being said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Egyptian pyramids were not built by slaves. Egypt unveiled newly discovered tombs that are over 4,000 years old, attributing them to individuals involved in the construction of the Great Pyramids of Giza. This remarkable find serves as additional evidence contradicting the belief that slaves were responsible for building these ancient structures. Basically, what we have always seen in Hollywood movies isn't true. What a surprise. The tombs consist of a series of unassuming shafts, approximately 9 feet deep, where a dozen skeletons of pyramid builders were unearthed. The dry desert sand has impeccably preserved these remains, along with containers that once held beer and bread intended for the workers as afterlife. These builders hailed from impoverished Egyptian families residing in both the northern and southern regions of the country. They were highly respected for their labor, to the extent that those who perished during the construction were honored with burials in tombs near the sacred pyramids of their pharaohs. So, yeah, 
Not slaves at all. The tombs themselves contained no precious metals or valuables, which effectively shielded them from tomb raiders throughout history. These men regularly consumed meat. In fact, they were provided with a daily supply of 21 cattle and 23 sheep sourced from local farms. They also worked in three-month shifts. That's right, they had paid holidays. It took over 10,000 workers more than three decades to construct a single pyramid. Oh, and make sure to subscribe and like the video, or you will enter the pyramids and never find your way out again, ever. Number 18, Book of the Dead. The ancient Egyptian funerary text known as the Book of the Dead was used from the early years of the New Kingdom, approximately 1550 BC, until around 50 BC. Its original Egyptian name can be translated as the Book of Coming Forth by Day or the Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. Although it is referred to as a book, it isn't quite a book, but rather a loose compilation of texts, including numerous magical spells designed to aid the deceased in their journey through the Duat the underworld, and into the afterlife. These texts were written by various priests over a span of approximately 1,000 years. It is important to note that there were no singular or definitive versions of the Book of the Dead. The surviving papyri contained a diverse selection of religious and magical texts and exhibit considerable variations in their illustrations. Some individuals even commissioned personalized copies of the Book of the Dead, selecting the spells they deemed the most essential for their own passage into the afterlife. Comprised of numerous individual texts and their corresponding illustrations, the Book of the Dead frequently begins its subsections with the word Ra, which can be interpreted as mouth, speak, speech, spell, utterance, incantation, or chapter of a book. This linguistic ambiguity is very interesting. It reflects the Egyptian belief in the close connection between ritual speech and magical power. In the context of the Book of the Dead, the term is typically translated as either chapter or spell. Isn't that fascinating? Number 17. Animals were seen as incarnations of the gods. Throughout their history, the Egyptians were a deeply religious people, holding a strong reverence for the divine. However, their belief system differed from our concept of a single god. They perceived the entire natural world as brimming with sacred beings, manifested in trees and particularly in animals, leading them to worship them, just like how many of us worship God today. This perspective extended to various elements of nature. The wild fig tree, known as the sycamore, and the palm tree were considered sacred. Furthermore, numerous animals were seen as the incantations of different deities. Bulls, cows, cats, dogs, rams, goats, lions, lionesses, jackals, scorpions, crocodiles, hippos, the venomous cobra, also referred to as the Uraeus serpent, as well as several birds like falcons and vultures, all held divine significance. Over time, these animal deities began to be regarded as more personalized beings. To represent this, the Egyptians depicted them in human form, but with the heads of rams, jackals, cows, falcons, and other animals. Some deities even had multiple animals associated with them. For instance, both rams and geese were linked to Amon of Thebes, while baboons and ibises were considered sacred to Thote, the great god of wisdom. And of course, let's not forget their fascination with cats. These graceful and sacred creatures were associated with the goddess Bastet, who was originally a fierce lioness warrior goddess of the sun, worshipped throughout most of ancient Egyptian history. Number 16. Egyptians wore makeup. Although makeup has become a multi-billion dollar business in recent times, the practice of putting on makeup to look better is, by no means, a new phenomenon. In fact, Egyptians adorned to dress up and wear fancy makeup. They had an extraordinary assortment of cosmetics and possessed an exquisite artistry in applying makeup. During ancient times, attire and appearance held immense significance for the Egyptians. Every aspect, from clothing to cosmetics, was meticulously crafted to exude beauty and captivate the eye. 
the application of cosmetics in an ancient Egypt served both aesthetic and protective purposes. Both men and women embraced a variety of cosmetic products, applying them generously to shield their skin from harsh weather conditions and black eyeliner to protect their eyes from the intense rays of the sun. The type of makeup used varied based on social class and served different functions. Of course, they didn't have as many colors and options as we do today, but their colors were still pretty badass. They had black makeup made of carbon, lead sulfide, and manganese oxide, and was used to enhance the beauty of the eyes. The green makeup was derived from copper-based minerals like malachite. It added a touch of allure to the face. The red makeup consisted of a blend of red oshra and water, and just like nowadays, it was applied to enhance the color of the lips and cheeks, creating a vibrant and rosy glow. Number 15 women and men had equal rights in ancient Egypt. Sometimes the human race evolves for the better, and sometimes, unfortunately, we go backwards, such as the case of the position of women in Egypt. As seen in the earliest preserved archaeological records, Egyptian women held equal status to men within Egyptian society, regardless of their marital status. Among the notable figures in Egyptian society, Cleopatra and Nefertiti stood out as renowned rulers. Cleopatra, together with Mark Antony, ruled around 31 BC. She also served as the co-regent of her two husband brothers and her son. Nefertiti, the chief wife of Egyptian pharaoh Amenhotep IV, actively participated in Egyptian society along with her children. In addition to these female rulers, Hatshepsut took the throne and resigned as pharaoh in Egypt from approximately 1503 to 1480 BC. She significantly focused Egypt's economy on commerce and changed the empire. While the number of women rulers in Egyptian society have been relatively limited, women have consistently been regarded as equal to men in terms of status and legal opportunities. They were afforded the chance to engage in economic activities, including roles as merchants, particularly among the lower classes. Women also played active roles in religious activities, serving as priestesses. Notably, during the 6th dynasty, Nebes became a vizier, making her the first woman in history to hold such a position. Position. Number 14. The ancient Egyptians used the vessels to store the internal organs. In the mysterious world of ancient Egypt, an intriguing practice surrounded the afterlife emerges. The use of canopic jars. These ornate vessels played a vital role in preserving the organs of the deceased during the mummification process. What makes these jars even more captivating is the association of each jar with a specific son of Horus. The first son of Horus, Imseti, took charge of the liver, considered the seat of human emotions and vitality. Imseti's depiction as a human-headed deity symbolized his compassionate and nurturing nature as he safeguarded this essential organ. The second son, Hapi, guarded the lungs, the source of breath and life force. With his baboon head, Hapi personified the divine energy that sustained existence, offering protection to the lungs as they embarked on the eternal journey. The falcon-headed Quebesunef, the third son of Horus, assumed responsibility for the protection of the intestines. These organs represented digestion and nourishment, and Quebesunef shielded them, ensuring the sustenance of the deceased in the afterlife. Finally, Duamatef, portrayed as a jackal-headed deity, watched over the stomach, the vital organ associated with strength. The allocation of specific organs to each son of Horus reveals the ancient Egyptians' profound belief in the meticulous preservation of the body and its components. It shows their understanding of the importance of these organs in the eternal journey, safeguarding not just physicality, but the very essence of the individual. Number 13. Salvaging a 5,000-year-old boat in Egypt According to recent reports, French archaeologists have unearthed a wooden boat dating back 5,000 years during their expedition in Egypt. The discovery took place in Abu Rawash, situated west of Cairo. The pharaonic solar boat, measuring approximately 19 foot in length and 5 foot in width, was to be found in remarkably good condition. The vessel hails from the era of Pharaoh Den, one of the most esteemed kings of the First Dynasty. As per ancient beliefs, solar boats were intended to accompany pharaohs in the afterlife, thus being buried in close proximity to them upon death. 
The wooden planks of this particular boat are presently undergoing restoration before being exhibited in a museum. The wooden sheets of the boat have been transported to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization, where restoration work will take place. The completion of the museum is expected in the near future, and it is anticipated that the restored boat will be showcased to the public sometime soon. The team of French archaeologists responsible for the discovery operates under the French Institute of Oriental Archaeology. Their excavation efforts in Abu Rawash have been ongoing since the early 1900s. Number 12. Ancient Egyptian Board Game of Around 3,500 years ago, an intriguing ancient Egyptian game known as Senate served as a means to communicate with the departed. This board game of held a prominent place in Egyptian society for approximately 2,500 years, reflecting a spiritual significance in its later stages. Recently, an expert claims to have stumbled upon a Senate board from this transformative period. Senate involved two players who each controlled five pawns, placing them on a grid of 30 squares arranged in three rows of ten. Through the roll of a dice, players strategically maneuvered their pawns, aiming to guide all five to the ultimate finish point located in the lower right corner of the board. As time passed, Egyptian texts began describing Senate as a representation of the soul's journey through the realm of the dead. The newly discovered board showcases a significant development, featuring a hieroglyphic symbol depicting water on one square. Archaeologists interpret this symbol as representing a lake or river encountered by the soul during its passage through the underworld. Remarkably, it appears to be one of the earliest visual representations of this aspect of the afterlife journey on a Senate board. This remarkable discovery sheds light on the evolution of Senate as a game intertwined with the concept of solidifying its status as the original game of Number 11. They invented the pregnancy test. So apparently, the Egyptians had their own pregnancy test dating back to 1350 BC. Of course, it didn't look anything like a modern pregnancy test with the famous blue line, but it did nonetheless involve urine. Yes, that would be pee. They discovered a papyrus that outlines a method wherein a potentially pregnant woman would pee on wheat and barley seeds over several days. According to the document, if the barley grew, it indicated the possibility of a male child, while the growth of wheat signified a potential female child. If neither grew, it suggested that the woman would not conceive at all. In 1963, researchers conducted experiments to validate this ancient theory. Surprisingly, their findings revealed that approximately 70% of the time, the urine of pregnant women indeed simulated seed growth, whereas the urine of non-pregnant women and men did not exhibit the same effect. Scholars have since recognized this as a groundbreaking discovery, as it may have been the earliest test capable of detecting a distinctive substance present in the urine of pregnant women. Some experts have postulated that elevated levels of estrogens in the urine of expectant mothers played a crucial role in the test's accuracy. This ancient Egyptian practice showcases their remarkable observation skills and early understandings of pregnancy-related biological changes. In a way, they were a lot more advanced than Middle-Aged Europe, which happened centuries later. Number 10. Egyptian Blue was founded in Ancient Egypt Step back in time over 5,000 years ago to the birth of a vibrant hue that captivated ancient Egypt, Egyptian Blue. This badass synthetic pigment emerged around 3,300 BCE, making it the oldest of its kind in the world. From the bustling production centers of Armana and Memphis to the stores of southern Italy near the Bay of Naples during the Roman era, Egyptian Blue was the bomb. Why was it rad, you ask? Well, for starters, Egyptian blue was a cost-effective alternative to indigo, that fancy dye imported all the way from India. This electric blue pigment was in high demand throughout the Roman Empire, fueling a bustling trade that brought color to the masses, and it is relatively easy to make. All you need is sand, natron, which is sodium carbonate, or ash, mixed with copper minerals or shavings, all combined to create a flower-like concoction. Once the ingredients were perfectly blended, they were rolled into small bowls and placed in a scorching hot furnace. We're talking temperatures reaching a staggering 850 to 1000 degrees Celsius. The result? A mesmerizing blue glassy lump aptly named Frit. 
This magical frit could then be ground into a pigment fit for the gods. Sadly, Egyptian blue's reign as a pigment came to an end with the fall of the Roman Empire. But guess what? Modern researchers are uncovering mind-blowing new uses for this ancient wonder. Egyptian blue glows like a star in the infrared range, and recent experiments have shown that finely ground or micronized Egyptian blue can be used as a cutting-edge fingerprint dusting powder. Cool, huh? Number 9. The Phenomenon of Breaking the Nose of the Statue in Pharaonic Egypt When you think of ancient Egyptian art, what comes to mind? Majestic statues of pharaohs? Intricate sculptures of revered gods and goddesses? And, alright, oh the missing noses. It's a peculiar trait that has left experts scratching their heads and conspiracy theorists buzzing with wild theories. But what if we told you that this wasn't just a result of the ravages of time? Oh my friends, there's something far more sinister at play here. According to the tireless investigations of our expert sleuths, this deliberate destruction of noses in ancient Egyptian art goes beyond mere happenstance. Grave robbers, it seems, had a clever trick up their sleeves. They believed that by mutilating these sacred sculptures, they could evade the wrath of vengeful spirits. Now you might be thinking, but noses break off all the time, right? Sure, that's a valid point, but let us enlighten you further. This particular phenomenon isn't limited to statues alone. Even scenes delicately carved into flat slabs have fallen victim to this targeted act of aggression. The consistency in this widespread destruction is what raises eyebrows. It's not just mindless vandalism, it's driven by a twisted blend of political and religious motivations. You see, for the ancient Egyptians, these sculptures were believed to house the essence of the individuals they represented. By smashing the nose, these grave-robbing culprits thought they could render the statue powerless. It's like they were deactivating its very soul. Number 8. Ancient Egypt was famous for the mummification of animals. When you think of mummification, your mind probably conjures images of pharaohs adorned in gold, wrapped in linen, and entombed in grand pyramids. But what you might not know is that the ancient Egyptians took their mummification game to a whole new level by including our beloved furry friends in the mix. That's right, animal mummifications was all the rage back in the day. Animals held a special place in Egyptian culture. They weren't just your average pets or sources of food, they were revered for religious reasons too. From cats to crocodiles, a whole menagerie of creatures found themselves embalmed for various purposes. First off, they were the beloved pets. Egyptians wanted to ensure their furry companions had a ticket to the afterlife, so they gave them the full mummification treatment. After all, who wouldn't want to be their loyal sidekick by their side in the great beyond? And they also considered some animals to be the physical manifestations of Egyptian deities. Take Bastet, the feline goddess, for example. She is clearly represented by a cat. Therefore, cats were sacred. Throughout ancient Egyptian history, animals reigned supreme. No other culture had such a profound relationship with them. In fact, nearly half of all hieroglyphs depicted animals in some way or another. The Egyptians believed that their survival, both physical and spiritual, depended on how they treated these creatures. It was a serious business. Number 7. Ancient Egypt was famous for wearing beards. We're about to unravel the ancient trend that even the most dedicated facial hair enthusiasts might find a little peculiar. We can all picture mighty pharaohs strutting around in their opulent robes, but what's that on their chins? Yep, false metallic beards. These sophisticated rulers were known for their clean-shaven looks, meticulously groomed to perfection. So why the heck would they go through the trouble of strapping on these synthetic facial manes? The answer lies in the realm of the divine, my friends. The god Osiris, the deity entrusted with the task of judging souls in the afterlife, was the ultimate symbol of the afterlife and the eternal reign, and he wore a metallic beard. It's no wonder the pharaohs wanted to imitate his look to channel all of that divine power. And you know what they say? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. 
By donning these man-made beards, the pharaohs aimed to establish a connection with Osiris and his eternal reign. Furthermore, these coveted beard accessories became prized possessions passed down from one ruler to the next, a symbol of divine lineage that spanned generations. But here's a twist in the tale. This trend wasn't limited to the fellas. You heard it right, ladies. Some badass female pharaohs like the legendary Hatshepsut, who ruled Egypt like a boss for over two decades, decided to rock the false beard too. Talk about breaking gender norms in the name of divinity. Number 6. Egyptian doctors had specialized fields. It's time to take a trip back in time to the land of pharaohs and hieroglyphs, where medical care was way ahead of its time. Forget what you thought you knew about ancient Egypt, because their medicine game was on another level. According to Homer, the Egyptians were renowned for their top-notch healthcare in the ancient world, and if you thought that was just an exaggeration, think again. Herodotus spilled the tea, revealing that even mighty rulers like Cyrus and Darius sought out Egyptian doctors. So what made ancient Egyptian medicine so darn impressive? They had wound care techniques that put some modern methods to shame. Contraceptives? Yeah, they had that covered too. But wait, there's more! A whole pharmacy's worth of drugs that would put your local CVS to shame. But it doesn't stop there. Ancient Egyptian doctors were the OGs of accurate diagnosis. They could spot heart disease like it was nobody's business. And guess what? They weren't just jack-of-all-trades either. These skilled physicians specialized in various fields throughout history, from the Old Kingdom to the Ptolemies. Imagine strolling through ancient Egypt, where you could find neurologists, ophthalmologists, dentists, gastroenterologists, proctologists, and internal medicine specialists. Let's not forget about the rock star physician, Uren Aki. This guy was a legend. His tomb proudly declared him as an eye doctor, a gastroenterologist, and an interpreter of liquids, and, hold on to your seats, a shepherd of the anus. Paid by the pharaoh, the physicians could treat patients for free. Yes, the Egyptians had universal free medical care, unlike some of the most advanced countries today. Number 5. Ancient Egyptians Using Moldy Breads to Heal Wounds Hidden within the dusty annals of history lies a papyrus that holds the key to unlocking the ancient Egyptians' mind-boggling medical knowledge. In fact, it is the oldest known, most badass nucleus of scientific enlightenment ever recorded. This extraordinary document shows that those ancient medics were way ahead of the game. While Europe was still grappling with basic anatomy, these ancient healers had already mastered the concept that blood flows through the body pumped by the heart. But that's not all. These medical visionaries were also master stitchers, pioneering the art of closing wounds with precision. Also, the oldest descriptions of brain injuries, including the brain covering membrane, known as meninges, can be found right here, tucked away in this ancient papyrus. They understood that honey was a natural bacteria killer. But wait, there's more! The ancient Egyptians were prescribing a concoction made from willow bark to relieve pain. Sound familiar? That's because willow bark contains a natural painkiller similar to the holy grail of relief we know as aspirin. And here's the real kicker. They were using moldy bread on wounds. I know what you're thinking. Moldy bread? But it's moldy! But guess what? They stumbled upon the groundbreaking principle behind penicillin, the first ever antibiotic, way before Alexander Fleming had his light bulb moment in 1928. Turns out, those sneaky Egyptians were already fighting infections without even knowing what bacteria was. Number 4. The Ancient Egyptians Performed a Dental Operation as it turns out, the Egyptians were a civilization that knew the value of a dazzling smile. Dentists in ancient Egypt weren't just your run-of-the-mill tooth fairies. They were revered as crucial health providers, tackling some seriously gnarly oral ailments that would make your dentist's drill tremble. Loose tooth got you down? No problemo. These ancient dental wizards had a trick up their sleeves. They would fill those wobbly pearly whites with a herbal concoction of honey and barley, sealing the deal and keeping that tooth in place. Egyptian dentists didn't shy away from hardcore operations and surgical procedures either. We're talking jaw placements, surgical removal of abscesses, and even partial gum removal. These dental daredevils weren't just about scraping off pieces of stuck food. They were pioneering the field, making waves that would ripple through the ages. 
but the crown jewel of their dental legacy? They invented dental bridges while the rest of the world was fumbling in the dark. The Egyptians were trailblazing in tooth replacement technology. They threaded delicate gold wires around and through replacement teeth, attaching them to nearby teeth. After wires, they experimented with making thicker gold-plated mouth guards to hold teeth in, and these pieces were actually seen as a symbol of wealth. If this reminds you of a modern-day gangster grill, that's because they are pretty much the same. Number 3. Cleopatra was of Greek origin. When you think of the iconic Cleopatra, images of a stunning African queen may immediately spring to mind. Her portrayal in movies and popular culture has often depicted her with dark skin and striking features, leading many to believe that she was of African descent. And yet, contrary to popular belief, there is a resounding consensus among scholars that Cleopatra was not, in fact, of African descent. Sorry to burst your bubble, but this legendary ruler hailed from a predominantly macadamic Greek ancestry with a splash of Iranian heritage, Sogdian and Persian to be exact. Which means that Cleopatra, the most revered and famous African queen in history, wasn't actually African. The origins of this misconception can be traced back to artistic interpretations and cultural assumptions rather than historical accuracy. Cleopatra's image as a powerful and alluring African queen has been romanticized over the years, captivating the imagination and perpetuating a narrative that strays away from the historical record. So who was Cleopatra really? Born in 69 BCE, she was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, a line of rulers who descended from Ptolemy I, a general of Alexander the Great. The Ptolemies, hailing from Macedon in Greece, ruled over Egypt for centuries. Cleopatra herself was the product of generations of intermarriage within this Greek dynasty, solidifying her Macedonian roots. Number 2. The Ancient Egyptians Used to Wear Wigs We've all heard about the fabulous headdresses of ancient Egyptian royalty, but let's take a moment to appreciate another hair-centric marvel, wigs. These bad boys were more than just a fashion statement, they were a symbol of status and an ingenious solution to bear the scorching Egyptian sun. The origins of wig wearing can be traced back to ancient Egypt, with the earliest known specimen discovered in a female burial site at Hieraconpolis, dating all the way back to around 3400 BC. Talk about timeless style! However, don't think for a moment that wigs were a fashion choice available to the masses. Oh no! These luxurious headpieces were reserved for the creme de la creme of Egyptian society, the elite. So why were wigs such a big deal? Well, in ancient Egypt, where the social hierarchy reigned supreme, your hair game spoke volumes about your rank. Shaven scalps were a symbol of nobility, but they came with a caveat. Exposure to the blazing Egyptian sun. Enter wigs. These ingenious creations not only protected those regal scalps from getting fried, but also allowed the upper crust to flaunt their lofty status in the most stylish way possible. And, you know, you can't get lice if you don't have hair. Number 1. Baboons were trained in ancient Egypt to catch criminals. When we think of police animals, images of loyal dogs or majestic horses often come to mind, but here's a surprising twist from the annals of ancient history. Trained baboons serving as law enforcement officers. Yes, you read that correctly. Hieroglyphs and artwork from ancient Egypt reveal a jaw-dropping truth about their criminal justice system. The use of baboons to catch criminals, just like modern police would use their trusty canines. Imagine a busy ancient Egyptian city with its bustling marketplaces, crowded streets, and oh no, a thief on the run! As we know, thanks to a stunning display captured on classical Egyptian artwork, authorities would unleash a baboon on the unsuspecting criminal. In the engraving, as the baboon sinks its teeth into the thief's leg, he pleads desperately for the authorities to call off the primate assailant. It's a scene that feels more like a wild animal documentary than ancient law enforcement, but this was the reality in ancient Egypt. As you can see, the Egyptians might have been ancient, but they sure knew what they were doing. What aspect of their incredible culture fascinates you the most? Tell us all about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. We'll see you next time then, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.